Welcome Minneapolis families and community members, and thank you so much for joining me to learn a little bit more about the investigations curriculum that your child will be working with in the classroom for the next several months. Today we'll talk about how the materials support and engages your child while they're learning mathematics. We'll talk about what you might see your child doing at home, and we'll talk about how these materials might be a little bit different than the way that we learned mathematics so you can better support your child at home. I want to start by giving you just a little bit of background on how the program is set up. There are different investigations within the investigations curriculum. And what I mean by that is there are a group of several lessons that focus on a certain type of math content for several days in a row so that students can really start to develop that understanding. For instance, today we're going to focus on second grade and an investigation or chapter on comparing quantities and counting by groups. Let's take a look really quickly at a lesson so you can see what your child might be doing. Let's start by looking at one second grade lesson, tens and ones, in that first unit, so you can get a better idea of what your child might be doing in class. Every day starts with a classroom routine. This routine's called Quick Images, and the teacher simply projects it. It stays on the board for about five seconds or so. Then they project it again, again just that five seconds, and then one more time so that the children in the classroom can discuss what they see. Quick Images is a way for students to start taking mental pictures of math. In this case, they're starting to get used to tens frames, and they know that if they move over two of the dots from this tens frame into these spaces over here in this tens frame, they would have one ten, and three leftovers. So it's a great way for their brain to start getting used to what math looks like every single day. This is where they start to remember their math facts, have a great discussion with the other students in their class, and start making sense of the world around them. Once the children have finished that classroom routine, then they usually work on an activity. Sometimes that activity is a game, like we'll take a look at in a moment, or that activity might be a worksheet that they're completing by themselves or with partners. Everything that you see today will be in print, or they can get online and look at that Savas Realize website. And I'll show you what they see in a moment. Notice that if it's in print, but they're looking at it online, they can play it so it's read aloud. Problems about tens and ones. Solve each problem. Show your work. Sally has three towers of 10 connecting cubes. That way the reading of any word problems doesn't interfere with them showing what they know about math. Everything that we see today will be in Spanish and also English. Notice that there's tools over here if they work with this online. So if your child is ever absent and they're completing something online, they can work using these tools so they can have all the same manipulatives that they have in class. You might see work like this coming home or they might just do this in class. The last part of their day for this particular day's lesson is a game. Investigations does a lot of work with games because as students are continuing to play that game, they start to memorize their facts and keep track of their learning in a different way than when we learned. Rather than having 25 or 30 problems on a page, they're engaging with the game. In this ca case, they're counting with money and they're coming up with a way to get to 50 cents when they're collecting that 50 cents. So I had child number one rolled a seven, so they get to pull over seven cents. Now player number two, oh, also rolled a seven. So they're gonna pull over five, six, seven. And it gives you directions as a parent or a family member up top in either English or Spanish. Your teacher might assign this game as a follow-up activity, and then you can help your child play this game. Now, when they're in class, they have not only these digital tools, but they also have plastic coins to play the game with, or if you have coins at home and you want them to play the game with real coins, you can do that too. Again, there's directions up here that tell me things like, we wanna make sure that we have the least number of coins, so I know two fives makes a 10, and I can bring over a 10, and then I can trade out five pennies for a nickel for five cents. Again, just a great way to practice 
in a real world situation where kids are playing with money rather than just doing paper pencil problems. So that's what a typical day might look like in the classroom. Lots of talking with the students to talk about what they know, to talk about the game they're playing. The teacher brings them back together and mentions a few things that he or she saw when they were walking around the classroom. They might have your child share out their work or what they did in a group to keep track of what they were doing. It's just a great way to discuss mathematics and for them to understand why mathematics is important. Now your teacher can use this website to assign activities to your child. Let's take a look at what that looks like from the student side. Your child will log in to Realize the same way they log into anything else on the school website. Maybe your child's teacher has them go through Google Classroom. Maybe your child's teacher has them just use their badge and go through Clever. Your child will know how to log into the website. When they log in on the home page where I am now, I can see any assignments that my child needs to work on. And then I can also see the programs that my child is working on, which is basically just their grade level. In this case, they are working in the second grade English and also the second grade Spanish. If you'd like your child to have both programs available to them so that your family can help them in Spanish, even if they're learning in English, please just reach out to the teacher and we can easily do that. So let's take a look at what my child got assigned. I can see when it's due. It looks like my child has a math words and idea activity. These are really, really helpful because they do a great job of explaining to me the way that my child's learning in class. In this case, it's a video. Let's listen for a minute. Counting by twos, fives, and tens. Many things come in groups of two. For example, shoes come in groups of two. I can count by twos to figure out how many shoes. How many shoes are there? You can see there's pause points down here so that I can watch the video with my child. And when the video pauses, I can have a talk with my child. I can discuss what they think, and then we can play it again and see if we were right. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. 14 shoes. Let me the 100 chart shows counting by groups of two. If I say only the shaded numbers, I'm counting by groups of two. Again, it shows me as a family member how they're learning in class and how I can help them. You can see we've already counted using pictures, a number line, a hundreds chart. Now they're seeing those connecting cubes like they see in class. So it's a great way for your child to be able to explain to you how they're learning and to continue to keep practicing. And then they get a chance to practice. Try it. Use the 100 chart to... And again, it will read it aloud for me. And again, I have all of these great tools to do that. So maybe my child wants to use these little counters, two, four, six. A lot of us just don't have manipulatives at home. Please know that all of the manipulatives are included digitally too. And then there's that third place to work with. And I can count by different types of items. Here I'm counting by twos. Here I'm counting by fives. Here I'm counting by tens. Once my child is done and we've practiced, then I go down here on the bottom right and I click on this green check mark. That means I'm done. And the computer makes sure I'm done and I turn it in. Other things that might come home include these family letters. You might see these in English or in Spanish, depending on what your child's teacher assigns. And again, it can be read aloud. Las matemáticas en esta unidad. Estimada familia. Now you might just see those letters come home printed out or they might assign them so you can see them all in one spot. Another thing that you might see is homework. Now you might not see homework come home every single day, but if they do have homework, you'll either see that in print because it's also in your child's book, or you might see it being assigned. There are always directions on the homework and all of these pieces can be read aloud. Now assignments aren't the only thing that I can find on Realize. You can see I can also find the book that I'm working on. And down here, I have math tools that open up in a new window so I can go back and forth and use them. If I'm not sure how to use this tool or my child hasn't seen this yet, there's a question mark up here that tells me how to use it. So it gives me all kinds of directions 
for how to help my child with that tool. I also have the game center with all of the different games that my child might be using during the year. Maybe I wanna play collect 25 cents instead of collect 50 cents. I've got all of the directions right here that can be read aloud to me. Notice that if I wanna see these in Spanish, I just click on Espanol and all of the games and all of the directions are now in Spanish. I also have that math words and ideas that we were just looking at. There's my counting by twos and fives and tens. And here's my counting by groups. So I don't have to wait for an assignment to be able to help my child with one of these videos. Counting by twos, fives, and tens. And just like the other part, it can be translated into Spanish if it didn't already get assigned to me in Spanish. One other thing I wanna point out, notice that you have all these grade levels on the side. So maybe my child is struggling with counting and needs a little bit of help, and I'm not sure how to help with that. If I go down into first grade, I can find counting in first grade too, like counting by groups. So again, sometimes they're tutorials. Counting by groups. You can count more quickly if you count. And sometimes they're videos, but they always do a great job of explaining how we've been using those tools in class. The 100 chart. It can help me count, add, and subtract. So just to quickly review, anything that your child has been assigned will be on this home piece. When you log in, using whatever way your child's teacher would like them to learn. And I also have all of these great tools over here on the side, including the textbook in lots of different forms, as well as math tools, game center, and those math words and ideas in English and Spanish. Our goal with investigations is to make your child have that love for mathematics and make mathematics understandable and fun for them. Thank you so much for joining this brief overview of investigations.